Good morning, everyone. We are in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 today, continuing this navigation through the heart of this letter and looking at the promises that Paul reminds us we have in Christ when we surrender to him. We talked the first day about clarity, how he removes that veil so we can understand God and his ways and his life purpose. We, we talked the second day about a makeover, how he's an interior designer coming into our lives to redesign us from the inside out. And then yesterday we talked about eternity, that great gift of eternal life, but not just eternal life, a remake of that spirit so that we can live righteously in the righteous eternal body. Today we look at the fourth promise and it applies to life on earth, intimacy with other people. And here's what he says in 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Do not be yoked or mismatched with unbelievers. What, does, what fellowship does light have with darkness? Well, in other words, what does righteousness have to do with sin? <laughs> we use this verse when we talk about relationships and dating and marriage a lot, and appropriately because you're talking about a lifelong relationship that you're embracing. And, he, and the purpose of that is to remind us that Christians and believers in Christ should not be yoked or connected or married to an unbeliever because that's going to devalue the relationship, lower the values of your walk with Christ, or create incredible conflict in the marriage relationship. And appropriately so. I know we don't always like hearing that when we're dating people, but the fact is you're not just bonding two bodies together, you're bonding two spirits. And how can the spirit of Christ in one person find a permanent, complete healthy bond with someone who's not of Christ in another. Now, there's lots of questions and issues that that goes with, but the, the concept, the principle of it is accurate. Don't bond yourself in any relationship with someone who doesn't share your walk with Jesus. That's, that's true in marriage and dating. That's also true in work. It's true in community relationships, and it's especially true in your own personal relationships with friendships. Now, that being said, I want to be clear. He's talking about not bonding yourself with sin. You still have to have relationships in the world. You just don't want intimate relationships with people who don't share your values. So that doesn't mean you, it doesn't call you to get rid of all relationships or avoid anybody who does things that are wrong or doesn't believe in Jesus. It's just saying save those intimate relationships for only those people who carry the same values and beliefs as you because that's the only way you'll find compatibility and intimacy. I, I encourage you, if you're dating, waiting is faster at finding the right soulmate than rushing. Don't rush because you're attracted on the outside. Look at the inside. Listen to the promises we talked about and enjoy a great relationship with a future mate by waiting for the right person from God in the beginning. Second thing is don't start dating someone who is not along the same path with you. If you're, if you're dating anybody, make sure before you start the first date that you're already following Christ together and they are walking with you, not behind you, not even ahead of you. And then finally, don't evangelate. You know, you know what that is? Evangelating is dating someone so you can evangelize them to bring them to Jesus so that then they're worthy of dating. Save that. Let Jesus do the work on their life. You need to focus on your walk with Jesus and let him bring the right person to you because you're not the Savior. Let him be the Savior. He does it much better than we ever will. God bless you in this. I know it's a difficult principle, but that's the secret to intimacy is how you yoke yourself with the closest relationships in your life. We'll see you again tomorrow to finish up this week's session on 2 Corinthians. Talk to you then.